certainly, again, that reminds us of the third verse of that beautiful song. Hope as an anchor so steadfast rends the dark veil for the soul, whither the master has entered, robbing the grave of its gold. Come, then, O oh, come, glad fruition, come to my sad, weary heart. Come, O oh, thou blessed, hopeless glory, never, O oh, never depart, O oh, blessed hope. For the Christian hope springs from faith and the knowledge that we are obedient to the Lord. And our hope is supported by the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Paul wrote, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We find hope on every page of, of God's word as he begins to unfold and reveal his great divine plan for our salvation. But that hope can only belong to those who have obeyed the Lord. Those who have not surrendered to God's plan of salvation as set forth in the New Testament have no basis for hope. Unless we obey Christ, we're strangers from the promises of God and have no hope. Paul wrote that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Ephesians 2.12 Jesus described the ultimate hopelessness in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, bringing, being in torments. And seeing Abraham afar off in Lazarus' bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may tip his, dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Truly the ultimate hopelessness. In the Valley of Dry Bones, we find the condition of people who are alienated from God. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. But there is hope in God's promise when men repent. Moreover, I'll make a covenant of peace with them and it shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I'll place them and multiply them, and I'll set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yea, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The covenant which the Lord spake, of course, is the New Testament, the new covenant of Christ. And his tabernacle is the church. In the very first gospel sermon ever preached, Paul announced that the promise of God is made to all men in Acts 2.39. And that promise of God is fulfilled in Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, in all, that in all things he might have the preeminence. We need to understand that Christ is to have the preeminence in our lives and that only in him as faithful Christians do we have hope of heaven. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, Psalms 146.5. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, Jeremiah 17.17.7. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of hope, firm to the end. Certainly hope provides us motivation to strive for purity and perfection. You know, that motivation, striving for purity, is sort of like if you, if you get a brand new white suit, the first time you wear it out, what are you going to do? You're going to be very careful not to soil it. And, and that's how we should view our salvation in Christ. From the moment that we're baptized, from the moment that we obtain forgiveness through confession and prayer when we have sinned and fallen, each time we're forgiven, we, we have a new white suit. And we should strive to maintain that purity and that perfection. Hope gives us the courage to do that and the patience. And we can rejoice in the knowledge of that hope and the stability that comes from that anchor that we have in Christ assurance of his promises. Do you have that hope? 
Have you obeyed the Lord's gospel? Do you have basis to hope in a heavenly home? If not, it's available for you. And we'd love to assist you in gaining that even today and ask you to come in obedience to the gospel. If you've had that hope in the past and lost it through sin, then the Lord is waiting to receive and to forgive and to cleanse that white suit again. All you have to do is come to him in humble confession and pray for forgiveness. If we may assist you in any way, we invite you to come now to stand and sing.